Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. It is the Royal Arsenal Dao from LK Chen. And in a nutshell, this was sent to me for the purposes of review. I'm going to do two videos. One, I'm going to do uh, just kind of the basic gist of the sword, some initial impressions, some dry handling, and I'll include all the links and uh, specifications in the description down below. Uh, do know, again, this was sent to me for the purposes of review. I didn't spend any money on it. I got it for free. So if you think that makes me biased, just know that up front. The other thing you should know is I don't know how to use this sword specifically. I didn't train in the martial arts specific to use it. I do swing swords around, but I'm not particularly good at the martial arts styles that I study, so knowing how to use this one, I'm, I'm a, a bit of a fish out of water. Anyway, the basic gist is I'm going to kind of give you the lowdown on what I think of the sword. I'm going to go kind of soup to nuts, top to bottom, show you the build quality, things that I notice. I'm going to take it out and do some cutting, and then I'm going to kind of pause there. Before I get into the rest of the video, there's a couple things you should know. One, this is based on a historic model from my understanding, so there's a lot of things that I might nitpick about, but the basic gist is I don't know how much I can nitpick given that it's supposed to be kind of a reproduction of a of a historic piece, not just take influence from it. So a lot of the things that I might complain or want to change, uh, they're trying to do a historic recreation, and I give them some credit for that. In terms of the history around this, I really don't know much about it, and I'm a bad student of history, but I will link to some videos, namely one by Matt Easton that uh, shows a little a little bit more of the historical side of this sort. I think it's important, but I would, I would recommend you check that out if you're interested in the historical side of it, if you haven't already. Let's start with the pommel, the ring area here, and what I see is this ring has some tool markings on it. It also appears to be painted black, and I've heard from some folks that this paint, or whatever paint is used on here, uh, or whatever material is used to coat, doesn't hold up particularly well. Now, the one that I have still seems to all in all be in good shape, but um, I'm going to kind of keep an eye on it while I use it. I haven't done much use, really any use, to try have some dry handling at this point. Um, but I'll keep an eye on this to see if the paint comes off with, with you know, some, some basic usage. Uh, my light is not particularly useful <laughs> in this way. It's, it's very dark, and this is very black paint, but hopefully you're able to pick up some of these tool markings on here. None of them are sharp to my fingers, though, so I can move around on this, uh, on the ring and not have it bite. But there are some ledges on the edge of this wood that will, I don't know, create some discomfort, if you will, if I were to grab them with my fingers. I can I can kind of feel the, the rough edge of them in a way that I would say is uncomfortable, but I haven't swung it around yet at a target, so I don't know if it will interfere with actual usage. I will eventually take the handle apart, and you'll be able to see what's underneath this cord wrap when I, when I get done to down to using the sword, uh, but at the moment, I don't know how the ring is secured, if it's welded. Either way, it does, it does feel on there pretty sturdy. All right, my light is getting progressively more Halloween-esque, and it's not to creep you out. It's to give you better close-ups of the sword. Uh, what you can see down here by the ring is that these wooden slats are sanded in this part, and it's actually reasonably comfortable in this spot here. Uh, it's really the ledges of the the flats of the grip that are, are kind of pointy and hurdy, if you will. Again, I don't know how it's going to impact actual usage, but uh, at least in terms of finish work, it seems like these could be rounded a little a little better to, to create a less opportunity for discomfort. If I move on to the grip, well, the grip is really simple. It's just a paracord wrapped or some sort of, of cord wrapped grip. It has some relatively interesting pattern to it, but it's overall pretty simple. From what I can tell, it looks like there's a a full tang under here with some simple wooden scales on the side or simple wooden kind of planks on, on either side of the grip and then it's probably secured, glued in some way and then bound in this cord. Uh, the cord is, is mm, it's not particularly slippery, it's, it's reasonably comfortable, but this very small grip uh, forces you to think about how to grip the sword and when I say that, uh, so if I hold the sword like I would any other, any other sword I suppose, uh, it just sits really wonky in my hand. It's almost like a children's toy or something. It just doesn't sit particularly well. So I, I almost want to keep it in the kind of in the in the knuckle area here and and hold it and and line my fingers up just a little bit differently when I when I hold it. Um, it anyway, I suppose it just makes me think about how to hold it because otherwise it feels like it's going to want to run away from me or like I, I'm, I'm unable to securely grip it uh, effectively. Anyway, the cord wrap is not uncomfortable, but it doesn't really do much of anything for me in terms of specialness or anything like that. That said, it doesn't move around. I can push on it. Nothing wiggles, nothing is, is loose. It is marginally slippery, but I've only handled it with dry hands, so I don't know how, how it changes if my hands are wet or sweaty, and it's pretty humid outside. So when I go outside and cut in just a little bit, um, I suppose I will find that out because it will come, become a ball of sweat relatively quickly. Anyway, as it is, it's a reasonably handsome looking grip, albeit relatively small. This rectangular kind of section to it allows you to index it pretty quickly. And you can also see that it has like a, a curve here. So your hand kind of, uh, it's a little thicker up at the top here and then kind of 
tapers down ever so slightly, so your hand kind of naturally finds a good resting place. It's really how it sits in your hand because it feels like a little, I don't know, Lego block or something in your hand. It's, it's really, really, I don't know, I have trouble I have trouble gripping it without kind of rethinking how I hold on to it. And that could just be my unfamiliarity with these types of weapons. All right, that brings us up to the guard area, if you want to call it that. There's basically like a little washer area that's stuck on here, and this is kind of a goofy thing to me. Now, I understand that this is modeled after a historic piece, uh, but this this seems, um, I don't know, it just seems unfinished. It seems not, not so great. It looks like these were made to stick together in, in a way that is is symmetrical and they're just not made that way so there's there's always a ledge right here and maybe that's for something to me it just looks like they were they were designed to be the same size and they weren't again this is modeled after a historical piece at least that's my understanding i'm a really crap student of history so how that applies to a historical sort i, I don't really know anyway um it seems like they, they were more than capable of making something that was symmetrical and fit really well but they they didn't Presumably, if it's modeled after a historic sword, and LK Chen uh, chose to, to continue that. Anyway, it just it just looks off to my eye. Anyway, uh, the other thing to note, uh, this is recessed in the scabbard. These transitions are actually pretty good. But if I pull this out ever so slightly, and do you know how, how, how the tension is in the scabbard? It's in there actually uh, pretty good. It doesn't fall out if I turn it up upside down. And this uh, seal does actually seem to be pretty good. It just looks a little off-center to me. Anyway the guard, if you want to call it that. It barely acts as a stopper uh, when you thrust, and it's also a little wiggly, so you can kind of see, I can move it around a little bit. And that does not make me particularly enthusiastic to try thrusting with this sword. Now, presumably, uh, you would not necessarily do a lot of thrusting. Obviously, it has a tip, so you could, but it's, it's very, very thin, the handle is somewhat slippery, and this guard doesn't feel like it's on there in a way that's particularly secure, so it makes me feel like my hand's gonna run up and over the sword, uh, and that the guard is gonna come off, and then I'm gonna cut my hands open. So I will probably limit thrusting in this review, uh, or maybe I'll stick my pinky through the ring so, so I can't. Um, I'll try a couple different things, but the guard, suffice to say, if you wanna call it that, this little washer spacer here does not feel like it is particularly, particularly secure. And I haven't, again, used this sword for much of anything at this point. It's pretty much just sat in the scabbard. I've taken it out, taken photos, taken measurements, that kind of thing. But I haven't, I haven't hit any, well, I did cut a pool noodle, but that's about the extent of the cutting it's seen so far. Before I move on to the blade, I'm going to talk a little bit about the scabbard. And as I noted up here at the mouth of the scabbard, uh, I like how these are recessed and it actually feels pretty good. There is a slight ledge in some of these areas, but overall, uh, for a sword at this at this price point, I'm not expecting perfection, and this is actually overall a pretty good level of finish. Uh, the paint on the scabbard is, is actually pretty good in most spots, but as you can see, there are some imperfections in some areas, and one side is certainly cleaner than the other. Every, every so often I can spot a bubble or a ding or something like that, but again, overall, the lacquer work on this particular piece is, is pretty good. Uh, it has this, I'm not sure exactly what this, this is, but something to secure it to your belt. Um, there's a paracord wrapped and then something that you'd be able to put in your belt. Now, I did see some other YouTube folks talk about how to use this particular thing. I'm not going to. Um, presumably, it's, it's in the right spot and you could hold it on your belt. And, and I just, I don't know the martial systems used to do that. So I'm, I'm not necessarily going to bother. I'm going to go out and, and chop some stuff with it. But uh, this thing does seem to be secured. I'll try and whack at it a little bit just to see if it comes undone easily. And that's about as, as much I can, as I can do. If I were to put it in a belt and try to draw stuff with it, I don't know that I could really do much of that effectively, but hell, maybe I'll give it a try. Anyway, um, again, paint overall, pretty reasonably done in this example. The black does kind of collect fingerprints pretty easy. It's in a high gloss uh, paint. And like I said, in the light you can kind of make out here, there are some imperfections in the wood, but overall I would, I would say it's actually a very pleasant looking scabbard. This fitting down here is a little less fun. It's got some pretty large uh, ledges on it and they grab onto things pretty easy here. And as you can see, if I go up to this fitting, it's recessed in the wood. But when I come down here, it's just kind of glued on. It's this, this fitting that's just glued on. It's not recessed, it's not carved into the wood, and I think it would go a long way to make this a little nicer if it were carved into the wood as, uh, as with the kind of mouth, mouth of the scabbard. I think it would make it look uh, that much nicer. These ledges are, are you know, I don't know how, how big they are, honestly. But uh, they're big enough where it, you know, I can certainly feel them with my hand, 
and I get the feeling that they might catch on things and, and that would be unpleasant. If anything, if you're not going to, then at least round the edges here so they're less likely to, to catch, if you will. Anyway, other than that, uh, it, is, it is a reasonably pleasant shape. Um, I don't know much about how these, these, these scabbards are supposed to be or how historic this is, but uh, I think that this is a, is a handsome fitting. I would just wish it was recessed. Now I'm going to talk about the blade, the pointy-pointy stabby part, the part you're probably most interested in. Unfortunately, my camera is actually picking up some of the fun metallurgical effects in this, in this sword. There is a very fun folding pattern on here, and it is very visible in just about any light. It's been done under a heavy etch, and it's just a, it's a very uh, pleasant thing to look at. I find it to be just the right amount of bold, have just the right amount of zazz without being a huge distraction. Uh, anyway, I really like the, the pattern in it. The geometry on this thing also looks really, really simple, but it's actually a little bit more complicated. So, uh, one, there is a slight hollow grind to it, which I might be able to, to get if I were to have some sort of prop or something like that, if I thought ahead before I started talking, which naturally I did not. So hopefully you're able to see this dice here. Um, and you can see there's a little pocket underneath, and that's where the hollow ground is. It's a very wide and narrow fuller that runs kind of the, the entire length of the blade. It, it follows all the way down um, almost the entire length of the blade and is present. It's tough to see in, in the rest of the camera light. You can kind of maybe make out as I move some of the reflection in here. But it's not necessarily apparent as you're, as you're looking at the sword. It only, uh, only happens when you stick your eyeballs right up to it. Anyway, uh, there is a very narrow or slight hollow ground on both sides of the blade. And with that, um, there's a lot of rippling in the surface of the hollow ground. Now, uh, presumably it's much harder to, to make even. You probably have to do this by hand. I imagine it adds part of, of why this blade costs what it does. Uh, but there are some surface ripples in the hollow ground, as there very commonly are within the bohi or fuller of, of many swords. They're not, not often polished. Uh, to the same level of flat as the rest of them. Now, the other blades from LKHN that I've had that have flat surfaces uh, are all very, very, you know, without ripple, I suppose I should say. But this one uh, wanders a little bit, has a lot of surface ripples. This bevel here also has some waver in, in this, uh, where the bevel for the, the edge begins. Um, right in this area here, you might be able to see, right where my thumb is, it just moves like, I don't know, half a millimeter or something. It seems only marginally wider, uh, but it's it's there, and, and so there are some wandering lines on there. But, again, it has a hollow ground blade, and it has a very pronounced secondary bevel, and it has a, a relatively uh, pleasant kind of face to the, the folding pattern. Uh, the tip, as you can see, kind of follows suit, and it glad gradually, gradually tapers off into the tip. The, the hollow ground kind of gradually tapers away as well when it gets into the tip section. Uh, other bit in terms of geometry, you can notice that it has a very slight recurve. So it's straight about yay, and then starts uh, pitching, pitching forward. And it's got a very gentle recurve. I'll put measurements and all that for the, the blade and how deep the recurve is and all of that kind of stuff in the, uh, in the description down below. Other bit to note is there is some distal taper here, so you can kind of notice how thick it is at the base and then gradually it tapers down very gently, but it's still pretty wide up at the tip here. Nevertheless, the blade lends itself to feeling very nimble in the hand. This is one pound in terms of overall weight, well, just a little over one pound. Effectively, though, this feels really, really fun in the hand. It feels light and whippy. It's one of the lightest swords I, I think I've held. I know it's 23 and a half inches, so it'd be or around 20 three inch. I think it's 29 something inches total. I'll put that in the description down below. Basically, it is short sword length. <laughs> uh, so it is, it is a sword, but it, at one pound, it, it feels, it feels very, very, very light. It's, it's very nimble, very agile. Um, it, it, you feel very, very connected to it, minus this kind of grip. The blade itself really lends uh, to the overall dynamics and feeling of the sword, but the grip is not not helping me really capture that sensation. It's, it's a lot of mixed emotions that I'm having here, because I really uh, if I if I keep a very loose grip, I love the way this sword feels 
in my hand. It's light and lively and, and absolutely a joy to move around. But when I hold on to it and feel like I'm, I'm about to you know, enter a situation where I need to, need to move it, it feels kind of wiggly in my hand and I don't feel like I'm in complete control, which is something I'm really going after when I'm, when I'm looking at a sword. Anyway, suffice to say, I will go out and cut with it and give you some more impressions with the dynamic side of it. Uh, the sword is not particularly sharp. I would say that it, it did not cut pool noodles particularly well in the, in the one go that I had with them. Uh, I'm going to go out and do some more bottle cutting and things like that. It could use a keening. Uh, at this point in the review, I'm not going to do that. I'm not sure if I will or won't. I'll more on that with, <laughs> with time. At the moment, though, I'm just going to take it out and try, and try and whack some bottles before I do anything else. Uh, from a historical perspective, this is an infantry weapon, as I understand it. So what type of uh, encounters it would need, I, I don't necessarily know. I don't know if, if keening up the edge is, is necessary for the level of sharpness they're, they're hoping to achieve, but it does seem like it would take one. I don't know. Anyway, I might sharpen it up later. At the moment, though, I'm just going to go out and whack a few bottles. It's a odd bit of experimentation here with my grip. If I hold it the way I just feel like I'm supposed to, like yay, then that's where I feel the most vibration in my hand. If I lock it in this area here, it feels really feels like I'm throwing it out with a broken wrist. It doesn't doesn't feel good either. Now, if I hold it down here and almost like a pistol-like grip, it doesn't vibrate in my hand nearly as much. Thumb on or thumb off, it, it actually feels quite a bit more in control. Uh, I do feel some pressure obviously in my hand, but honestly, it's more comfortable than I would have expected to, to cut this way. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel it in my palm, but it's manageable.
radio short trend. So I obviously have a bit of cleanup to do. Some lessons learned here, uh, grip-wise. If I hold it with the ring in my in my pommel a little bit, it actually doesn't feel too bad, and the shot is not so bad. Gripping it here, while it feels the most secure, is also kind of the, the most uncomfortable when you actually make contact uh, with an object. You totally feel it vibrate here, uh, not so much. Also, this little thumb bit moves around, but as I press on it with my thumb, it actually kind of serves to lock things into place. And even if I meet it with a dull thud, it's actually still not, not too bad or uncomfortable on my hands. So um, not actually too bad. And as you can see, you can move it around, you can thrust with it. Uh, I don't find the grip to be uncomfortable. My hands are getting sweaty and wet now. And honestly, it, it only feels more secure in my hand. I still think the grip could be a little bigger. I still think it, that the, uh, the little guard here uh, could do more to make me feel secure. But honestly, it's not so bad. I wish it felt good this way though, because this feels like feels like the, the most comfortable way to hold it. And obviously it, it rattles around a lot here, but anyway, uh, that's what I found from using it so far. You might be able to make out a little bit more of the hollow ground nature this way. And also see some of those ripples. Overall, I'm not seeing any anything condition-wise that's really terribly concerning. You can see that I was really scratched up kind of this area on the blade. I was cutting a lot with the tip. Anyway, overall, it's still straight. It's still as sharp as it was. It's got a couple scratches. All right, sword friends, a couple of quick thoughts about this sword. So obviously you've seen me cut with it. You've seen what I did with the cucumbers and the whatnot. It's not a terribly impressive cutter, but one thing that's really, really impressive to me is how wonderful this actually feels in the hand. It's like it's it's not even there, but it gives me some reach. And obviously, while it's not gonna wow anyone in terms of competition cutting, it certainly does the job. It's still straight, it's still reasonably sharp. Whatever it's made out of seems to, seems to do well. Now, granted, I didn't just cut pickles with it. I whacked some dead tree branches and it's still straight. Lots of bad cuts were in there and it, it did the job. Some of those water bottles were pretty thick and obviously it was tough on the blade. It's not terribly terribly sharp. I should probably clean it up and give it another go. Um, but what I what I really want to, I suppose, say is that I think this would actually be at home in the hands of a lot of different people as like a home defense or a general backyard fun tool. Uh, this feels absolutely amazing. When I talk about home defense, I'm, I don't know much about it. I'm not any kind of strategic expert, but when I think of something that I'd want to have kind of by my bed in a no shit situation, it's something that I feel instantly connected to, something that doesn't feel like I need to train with to, to understand how to move. So granted, I study with a katana, but no surprise, that isn't what I would, I would first pick. Um, this feels like something that could be a contender were it not for this grip, and this is where it loses me a little bit. It's just, it doesn't feel right. I want something that instantly I can grab. This is, you know, this grippy part right here is, is pretty, I don't know, just doesn't, doesn't feel right to me. I have to think about how to move it around. And so for those people, which obviously this is not the market for, I think it could be. If you're looking for a project blade, if you can put a different handle on this bitch, I think it would be an absolutely fantastic feeling, wonderful blade. Anyway, uh, as it is, it certainly did the job, but I should probably sharpen it up and give it another go. All right, so friends, this is supposed to be a one-for-one -one replica of a historic piece, and I don't really have a way of substantiating it, but I can tell you dynamically it feels like it's fun. It has all the kind of properties of a well-built and blade built with intent, I suppose I should say. It's pretty well-designed. Even though it's really simple and pragmatic looking, it actually has a lot of little features in there that are, are kind of hidden and really expose themselves in the hand, and is very fun to move around. So if you're looking for a historical piece, then I think this really has a lot to offer. It has some shortcomings. It's not as sharp as I would like it to be. It's got some wiggly bits on it, but just for how you unique and different and small and lively it is and how kind of well designed it is, I, I think it's probably worth <laughs> worth looking into. At least I think that if you're looking for that historic piece, this really has quite a bit to offer. If you're not and you're looking for backyard shenanigans, just general fun, that kind of stuff, well, then it might be a little bit different. This handle offers a learning curve that I think more than I think more people are going to really want to take on. Uh, it really made me think and I, I suppose I enjoy that exercise. So if you're, if you're looking for a sword that makes you think again about how to hold it, then this isn't necessarily bad. But I don't think a lot of people are looking for that experience. Uh, I enjoyed it and I'm glad I got a chance to play around with it, but uh, this handle is really limiting for me. And I understand it's a historic piece, but it does keep me from recommending it to people that would want to use it as, as a home defense type weapon or something like that, which is, again, very unfortunate because this is one of those few weapons that you pick up and just instantly feels like, hey, I, I know what to do with this. You're, it feels lively and you're instantly connected to it. And from the minimal tests that I did with it, albeit some of them some, somewhat abusive, it held up and did all the things that it's supposed to do. If you don't mind starting with a a project, so to speak, where you might need to attach a different handle, then this might be a contender for something for backyard fun or 
some, something home defense-y, and I, I am not an expert in the home defense or tactics side of things, but when I think of something like, that I would look for in that category, I want something that I can pick up in the dark and instantly I feel connected to, like I don't need to train for hours to learn how to use, obviously you should do that, but something that just instantly I feel like I can move around, something that's a little shorter and able to move around in kind of tight quarters, and this is a real contender for that kind of thing, except for this goofy handle that, that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't give me the same type of connection that I would really want. Dynamically, though, this is this is absolutely wonderful in the hand. Anyway, do I think it's worth it? Yeah, I think it has a lot to offer for the sword. There are some things that I would I would say need improvement. This wiggly bit is, is not good, um, and the sharpness could come out of the box sharper. But anyway, that's all I have for now. For the moment, I would say, yes, it's worth it. Uh, I am going to do another follow-up video where I will sharpen the blade, and then I will do even more abusive things until the blade breaks. I suppose I can reevaluate at that point. But for the moment, I would say I'm very pleased with this sword, and it's very fun to move around in the hand. Anyway, that's all I've got. I hope the video's been interesting. As always, cheers, and thanks for watching.